Hey, how you doing, friends? We are here and we're looking at our first chapter in geometry, section 1-1. We're going to talk about points, lines, and planes. As with all chapters, we will start off by looking at new vocabulary, and the new vocabulary that we have here is listed in front of you. What I'd like you to do is take a look at some of the terminology. We won't write straight up definitions for most of them, but we will discuss the concept and give you sort of an, sort of an idea of where the concept comes from. Let's start with undefined terms. This handy chart, this key concept chart that you can find in your textbook, talks about the undefined terms, which for us will be the point, the line, and the plane. The point, line, and plane are considered undefined because there's no real life example of any of these things. We talk about them in kind of a conceptual way, not in a specific way. So these are considered undefined terms in geometry. So now we're going to talk about a point. So a point is a location. It neither has shape nor size. So when I think about a point and I think about the fact that it has neither shape nor size, I think about the number line. And if I were to have a number line and place a point here, remember points are usually referred to by a capital letter, point A. Let's call this point B, capital B, here. Point B we could say is at location, let's say, point 5, right? halfway between 0 and 1. But if I would consider the size of this point B and say, well, point B has a width of maybe 1 millimeter, that doesn't make sense because as soon as I move any space to the left or to the right, I'm actually talking about a completely different number. If I move slightly over from B, let's say point C, which is really close, let me use a different color, point C, which say is really there, anywhere slightly over from C, from B, right, is going to be some other point, let's say point five zero 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 three. And of course I can keep talking about getting between these points. So in that way, we can't really talk about the size of a point. So it has a size and neither a size or a shape, but we think of them as kind of a little tiny circle or a dot. A line is a collection of points and has no thickness or width, which is exactly one line, uh, there's exactly one line through any two points. So in geometry, we'll often think given any two points, there's only one line that can go through those two points. Lines extend infinitely in either direction. Lines are often named by a lowercase letter, like, usually in script, or by two points that are on the line. You can name a line, line M, as in the lowercase letter, or line PQ or line QP, depending on the two points that are on the line. Order doesn't matter. What you also want to notice is that you can symbolically represent a line by talking about two points on it and using the line symbol at the top. Notice the arrows on either side. The final unde the undefined term that we're going to talk about today is the plane. The plane is a flat surface made up of points that extend infinitely in all directions. The fact that it extends infinitely in all directions makes this picture kind of funny because this picture honestly looks more like a parallelogram. We use a parallelogram to describe a plane, but in our minds we need to keep in mind that this thing is not a parallelogram at all. It's not a four-sided figure or a three-sided figure or any-sided figure. It goes on forever and ever in every direction. When we talk about naming a plane, we have a few different ways to do that. One. Sometimes planes will be named by a capital letter located in the lower corner or upper corner of the plane. The capital letter will generally be done in script. Or we can talk about the plane given three points that are on it. A plane is a flat surface made up of points that extend infinitely in all directions. There is exactly one plane through any three points not on the same line. So I want you to think about putting, having two, I don't know, two tennis balls on your table and then holding one up in the air with your hand. And this is my ability to draw your hand. That's your hand right there, holding a tennis ball. Given this definition, we know that there's exactly one plane that can slice through all three of these points. So I want you to think of that plane again as maybe a flat piece of wood or a tabletop that you can lean on all three of these balls, tennis balls, right? So that would be the idea when we think about three points make up one plane. So three points are sufficient for naming a plane. You can name a plane and name the points in any order you like, BCD, CDB, DCB, so forth and so on. 
in this case. Or you can talk about the plane in terms of the one script letter that's down in the corner. So that's it for our undefined terms. Let's go back to our vocabulary list to finish up our definitions. So right now we're thinking about the word collinear. And just by the name, you might get that collinear means that these things, we, we talk about collinear dots, they fall on the same line. So collinear means on the same line. And so if I talk about some points here, I can have three points that are on a line and another line here, B, let's call this A, C, and D. A, C, D are collinear, A, C, B, a, C, B are not collinear. Those three, three points are not collinear. Similarly, the word coplanar means on the same plane. So any points that are on the same plane would be coplanar. And the word intersection. Intersection means the place where two or more shapes or figures intersect or join, where two or more figures meet. The next two terms that we're going to talk about would be the word definition, which we know what that is, and a defined term. For our intents and purposes, we're going to talk about definitions and defined terms are going to be um, described by undefined terms. So in geometry, we're going to talk about, we're going to, de we're going to use definitions or we're going to define things using undefined terms. So using undefined terms to explain concepts. The next thing that we're going to talk about is space. And I think you guys know what space is, everything, right? But for us, we're going to talk about space as boundless three-dimensional set of all points. And literally that's it for our new vocabulary. Let's get started looking at some examples. Here in example one, we're going to name lines and planes. Given this figure, we're going to name the things that they ask us. And of course, there's going to be more than one way to do this. So I might show you a couple of examples. But for you, you don't have to give me several ways. Just do it correctly in whatever way you is correct but cons and consistent with what we're doing. So a line containing point W. So here's point W. And the line containing it can be named in a number of ways. We can call it line N right? Because we see the script letter N representing that line. Or we can call it line VW, right? Or line XY, or line WX. Any two points on this line would do. And instead of writing the word line next to the two letters, I'm going to just put the arrow keys at the arrows at the top. So like I said, there's more than one way to do this, but these are acceptable. Let's look at this part. Part B, a plane containing point X. Well, here's point X, and the only plane that's represented here is plane N. So I can talk about plane N. Oh, no, just kidding. Sorry, sorry. I lied to you. It's plane P. When we talk about planes, we're using the capital letter. When we talk about um, lines, we use the lowercase script letter. So plane P is how I should describe this or how I'm naming this um, plane that contains X. And I can also use three non-collinear points. So I can't say plane V, W, X because they're on the same line, but I can say plane V, W, Z because they're not on the same line, but they are on the plane. They're not collinear and they're all three of them are in the plane. So I can write plane um, V, W, X or V, W, Z rather. Let's look at the next example. So here in example three, we're going to draw geometric figures, draw and label a figure for each relationship. So in lines A, B, and C, D intersect in, at E for um, A having this coordinate, B having this coordinate, C having this coordinate, and D having this coordinate on a coordinate plane. We remember what a coordinate plane is. A coordinate plane is described as the X and Y axes and all the points that are represented there. And we know the plane goes on forever and ever and in, in, indefinitely in, in every direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot these points and write down the things that they asked us to do. Draw the lines A, B, and C, D. Then we're going to find the point and then put a point F so that it is coplanar with the points but not collinear. So here are my points and I'm going to draw lines through them. So we can find that intersection. Remember the intersection, uh-oh, remember the intersection of the two points, of the two lines rather. And I know that's not straight. Don't be mad at me. Uh, the intersection of the two lines would be, did they give us a point? Point E. So here's E would be there. And we were supposed to um, 
Point F is a coplanar plane with the points, but not collinear with these guys. So point F can be anywhere. It can be right here if I wanted it to be. And we see that it is coplanar because it is on the XY plane, but it is not collinear. I'm going to show you the answer that the textbook had. So they chose to, they drew their line, our lines look pretty much the same, and then they chose to um, put the point here, which is totally fine. Let's look at this next part of the example. So in this situation, we're supposed to have a line QR intersecting plane T at a point S. And so uh, plane T, I'm going to draw that first, and generally we use kind of a parallelogram shape for a plane, and we're going to name it plane T, so I'm going to put a little T down here in the corner. And so QR intersects the plane. When I draw the intersection of a, of a, of a line in a um, plane, I'm going to choose the place where that's going to intersect, draw the line on one side, straight as I can, and then I'm going to pretend to draw the line on the other side, but I'm going to do it dotted because at that point it's underneath the um, underneath my picture. So this is line QR, so I'm going to name it. Let's give it one point here and one point here being Q and R, being simple. And then here, let this be point S where the intersection happens. Let's take a look at the way the text did it. Ah, similar, different angle, but whatever. So QR, they use R, the point R being this point down here, which is fine, and S is the intersection point. Let's look at our final example. The first question asks us to look at a drawing and kind of interpret what's going on. So how many planes appear in this figure? So as I look at it, I know that this is a some kind of a pyramid with a, a pentagon base, one, two, three, four, five sides. So I know that's one, two, three, four, five planes there that are represented here. And then there's the bottom one, which looks like six. And then this bigger one, well, this bigger one contains the bottom one. So the answer is just six. There are six planes here. Name three points that are collinear. Remember the word collinear means on the same line. So if I look around for three points that are listed on the same line, I could say perhaps maybe J, K, D. Those three points lay on the line. Maybe some other points might lay on the line here. Maybe I could say J, K, J, G, M does, but I don't have a line representing that. So I'm going to say J, K, and D. Name the intersection of the plane H, D, G, H, let's find H, D, G, and plane X, this plane here. So where does H, D, G, and plane X intersect? For this problem, you need to keep in mind that planes are going on in infinitely in all directions. So if this plane goes on infinitely in all directions, and so does this one here, the intersection won't just be this little segment HG, it would be the line containing HG. So I'm going to write line HG. And finally, at what point do LM and EF intersect? Let me highlight this really quickly so I can see a little bit better. So we're looking at LM, where's LM? Right here. This is the line we're taking a look at. Do the dotted. And EF, line EF, so the line containing this segment there. So we're trying to figure out where these guys intersect. Notice that EF is in the plane of X. It continues on and on forever on X. Whereas this line LM, goes through X at a particular point. I'm going to erase this for a second so we can see better. Notice LM goes through X at a particular point, at point L. What I want you to notice here is really important. The fact that this line only goes through at one point on the plane, and this line lives in the plane, and it seems like it's going to miss L, doesn't seem like these two points are going to ever meet. In fact, they're not. So the answer to this question is going to be at what point? Um, they won't, they won't, they won't ever intersect. These lines are called skewed. Skewed lines would be a, a vocabulary word we'll come up with a little bit later, but they're lines that exist in two different planes and never intersect. All right, that's enough for our lesson today. I want you to take the time to make sure you understand it, review it if you need to, and make sure and do the assignment associated with this lesson. I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.